Is training race, race horses um, rocket science, do you think? I mean, you are, a, you are a scientist, really, aren't you? You're a qualified vet. I was a vet first and foremost, but um, I did a more advanced education in equine medicine and then a PhD in exercise physiology. So I am trained as an exercise scientist. I ran a degree program in exercise science and have done a number of research studies. And you spent a couple of years with Martin Pike. <coughs> I was resident vet there for the best part of two seasons, yep, when I was there when Minnie Homer won the national. So I um, had experience at close hand of, you know, Because he was very keen on sort of monitoring, I don't know, sort of blood. Certain things, they did a lot of blood things. testing, but nothing really quite like this. So how did this develop then? Well, it's really um, been an evolution. I mean, my interest has been obviously in exercise science since I graduated. Um, but the practical application of it, um, there's a huge amount of research has been done in the last several decades on equine exercise science, but so little has filtered down to the, the real world of training racehorses. Okay, the veterinary management is better, nutrition and so on, but in fact of how horses are managed day by day, how they're trained, how they're monitored, um, little has changed really. And, and you, can, you can just, I mean, just go th through because you can monitor well, when you're, we, we'll see you up in the gallops and you can know exactly how fast you're going yeah. and you can monitor the, the, the heart rate of the, of the, of the yeah. horse. There, there are various things we can monitor, but from the outset, I'd like to try and dispel this thing. It was just science because that puts people off straight away. The racing industry, the racing business is very conservative with a small C. But what is done works. Horses get fit, they win races. But what we're trying to do is take the guesswork out of it. And in doing so, with a bit more close monitoring, improves the welfare of the horse. And I'd like to think the welfare of the owner, the owner's pocket. And as we go through, I can try and explain those points. So principally, we're, by, as I say, trying to take the guesswork out. And that's by measuring speed or monitoring speed as the horse exercises, but also monitoring the horse's work rate. And how we can do that is actually measuring the heart rate. It's very akin to driving a car having a speedometer and a rev counter. None of us would think twice about getting in a car and being able to look at the speedometer and rev counter. We're doing the same thing with so the speedometer your wrist tells you and a work rate meter on, on your wrist. Oh, right, so. so we have speed on the top display and heart rate on the bottom left. And this horse is giving me at the moment, I'm not even near him, but I'm getting a radio signal from this transmitter just in front of the saddle and it's giving me a heart rate there. If it was 42, he's just moved away. Is that away. good? Yeah, it's his resting heart rate. Yeah. In fact, he's just come back from exercise and he's recovered very quickly. He did, well, you'll see what was fairly modest exercise, but he's a jumper just getting, uh, building up his fitness uh, sort of late summer. So, so an unfit horse has a faster heart rate is it, when it's, before it becomes the sort of, you know... A, at any speed of exercise, yeah. an unfit horse has a higher heart rate than when it's fit. Yeah. And there is a progressive change in the heart rate against speed relation. But... As I say, it's a little bit like having the heart rate, a bit like having a rev counter. It tells me how hard the horse is working in relation to how hard it can work, which is quite different to the speed. Because yeah. some horses obviously have much more ability than others, and they will reach their maximum heart rates at a higher speed than the lesser ones. So it gives us more of an individual approach, if we want it, to uh, managing a horse's training. So there's a little pad to. underneath the saddle. Yeah, let me so. just show you what we've got here. Okay. This is, this is actually very simple. There's a little... Um, pack here, just clip to the front of a saddle or it can go on the saddle pad and I'll take the saddle off and show you what's under here. Very simple, we have a little lead going to basically a, a rubber patch which is a carbonised rubber patch and then if you turn him around Tim, then we've got one on the other side which um, in this case is a velcro strap, does up um, to the girth and that sits down there behind the horse's elbow. And most people are familiar with the concept of ECG. That is a question of measuring voltages at the skin surface that are, being, that are emanating from the heart. So for every heartbeat, we get very tiny voltages conducted through the skin, body's tissues. And this is basically picking up that voltage across his chest, transferred to a radio signal here, and it sends a signal to my monitor on my wrist. I'm just getting the, the most, the most potential out of your, out, out of the maximizing horses the potential of every, every individual. Every horse has a certain genetic potential to be an athlete, just like people. I mean, I could never be a, you know, I could never break a world record at no. 100 meters. Exactly, you and I, And a lot of horses, sad can, to say, you know, horses struggle yeah. to win a race of, of any nature. Our genetic potential is probably limited in terms of athletic capacity. So with the best coaches in the world, 
I certainly wouldn't be able to run at the Olympics. And the same for horses. Similarly, this fellow here, he has won three races for us, but all at a modest level. What's his name? Who, which one? Who's he? Indian Chase. Bred as a stained chase, but won three flat races for us. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I think we've, to some degree, maximised his potential. He was actually a, a bit of a cast-off because his confirmation isn't the best in the world, but he's managed to win some races for us. And, and this is kind of what it's all about from a trainer's point of view. A trainer has, I guess, three key issues at stake. First of all, a trainer has to train horses to win races, to continue the business, to get more interest, more owners. Second thing to bear in mind is the horse, the trainer has to get horses on the race course. And I'll come back to that point in a second. And third of all, the trainer really should be matching the number of outings a horse gets in a career. Because an owner wants to see a horse on the race course, to start with, running competitively, maximising their potential, and then hopefully as many outings as possible. Because there are loads of horses that never get onto a race course. Exactly. If you look at the statistics, they're actually quite frightening. The number of two-year-olds that never get on the race course, and the number of three-year-olds, the recent survey from... 2006, there were 25% of three-year-olds in training never actually saw the race course. One in four never gets on a race course. And even higher for two-year-olds, obviously they're immature and so on. Yeah. But, so from a horse welfare point of view, it points that we should be considering what we're doing in training them, because anything we can do to improve that is going to be for the benefit of the horse and its well-being, but also for the, the, the owner's welfare. We're all talking about lack of prize money and so on, but if a horse doesn't even get on the race course, he ain't going to have any chance of any prize money. And at the end of the day, the owner has a race horse to see it run as competitively as possible. Jeremy's technical prowess doesn't just stop at racehorse training. That's not you playing? Yeah. Is that you playing? You played all that stuff, yeah. All recorded here in this. Well, the drums upstairs. Is this, is this one of your compositions? Yeah. It's called Post Salisbury Blues. <laughs> called the Tide, actually. So, we've been far from baffled by science here at Cleve Stables. Maybe Jeremy has even opened a few racehorse trainers' eyes. Science in practice. <laughs>